So today we're going to look at properties that we can use with um, numbers of any type. And you've actually probably heard of several of these properties. Okay, and the key here is not that we have every single property memorized. That's not the goal. There are a couple properties that I think are super important that we should definitely know and know the terminology for. And then there are some properties that we might not always know the terminology for, but we need to understand how they work. And one of the largest shifts that we make as we go from sort of the middle school level of thinking to the high school level of thinking is to be able to do not just the actual process of solving equations, Okay, but to understand why things work. One of the things that I love about math is that it has set rules and we always have to work within them. Right? We can't just make up new things and be creative, which I know some of us love. I do not love to be creative. Right? Just tell me the rules and I will follow them. These are sort of our base rules that everything in math has to revolve around. Okay, and one of those rules says that we have something called a commutative property. Okay, and I hope when you hear that word, your brain kind of goes, oh, I think I've heard that before. How many of us say we think we've heard that before? Excellent. Okay, the commutative property which starts with the letter CO, says that we are allowed to change the order. So CO is change order. Okay, and this property exists under two operations. Okay, there are two different operations where we are allowed to use the commutative property. We can use the commutative property when we are dealing with addition. Okay, so technically that would be called the commutative property of addition. Okay, and it simply says that we're allowed to change the order of addition. So it says if I have something like A plus B, what does A stand for? Ooh, that's tricky. What is A? What is, like, what word would we use for this? What do we call this? A variable. A variable. What is a variable? We talked about this. What is a variable? Right? It's like a letter that takes place for a number. Right? It's a letter taking place of a number. So this is saying if A is any number, so then what is B? Any number, right? If we are adding a number plus a number, the commutative property says we are allowed to add them in reverse order and we would get the exact same answer. It's the simple concept that one plus two is the same thing as two plus one. We also have a commutative property of multiplication. So same idea, right? The commutative property says that we can change order. So the commutative property of multiplication says that we are allowed to change order when we are dealing with multiplication. So if I want to multiply A and B, how do I write multiplication between two variables? 
We could use a dot, but we don't tend to use that. We could use parentheses, but we don't tend to use that. Nothing, right? So if I say A, B, what operation is that? Multiplication. Now, if there are parentheses, if there are a dot, if there are, if there is a dot, that represents the exact same thing. If there's the X symbol, all of those are the same thing. Okay, this just tends to be how we write it. Right, the commutative property says I can change the order and get the exact same value. This is super valuable when we're multiplying multiple numbers. Right, if we have to multiply three times five times seven, we might choose the specific order we want to multiply in. That makes it easier for our brain to think of the numbers. Now, this is how we represent it with variables. But keep in mind, it might visually look a little different if we're multiplying other items. For example, I can't just put four, three, and that mean four times three, right? I would need a dot. I would need parentheses. I would need something else to represent multiplication. So recognize that those are the same thing, no matter what symbol we use for multiplication. Are we okay there? So far so good? That's probably, no, notice, no subtraction, no division, right? Three minus seven is not the same thing as seven minus three. So we cannot change the order of subtraction. We cannot change the order of division. Not allowed in that. Okay, next property. is the associative property. Okay, I'm gonna save you the heartache now. I realize my students all think that pencil lead is like gold and they really like to like shortcut and write abbreviations. Please do not choose to abbreviate the associative property with the first three letters. I'll put a little smiley face on your paper and you'll be like, oh my gosh. Okay, so pick, pick a few more than the first three letters, probably, okay? The so okay, so this is really corny. Just be aware, you got Mrs. McKinney. This is really corny, but it seems to work and my students remember it, so we keep going with it. Okay, the associative property has the CIA in it. And we're going to say the CIA's job is to maintain order. I mean, right, that works. So when we are talking about the associative property, we are not changing the order. Okay, but instead we are going to maintain the order. And break things up. So I'm going to highlight out the CIA is like breaking up math problems, but you know, that's what we're going for today. And once again, we have two operations that the associative property happens underneath. Property number one is addition. What do we think property number two is going to be? Multiplication. This is why everybody loves addition and or multiplication because they get a lot more freedom. Subtraction and division kind of don't get to do anything. Addition and multiplication are sort of a little bit more up in the air of things we can do with them. Oops, we okay? Yeah. Okay, so this says if I have something like 
A plus B plus C. If you want to add together three things, I think the majority of us would add a couple at a time and then add the third one. Right, so this says you can add A plus B plus C or it's the same thing as adding A plus B plus C. So notice we maintain the order. The order is exactly the same. A, B, C, A, B, C. The only thing that changed is what is getting broke together, like what's getting grouped together with those parentheses. So what do we think the associative property of multiplication is going to say? Same thing with multiplication. Yep, the exact same thing but with multiplication. So A times B times C equals A times B times C. Right, if we're multiplying three numbers, we can just choose which two of them we want to multiply first before we multiply the third one. How are we doing so far? Those are two of the properties that I think are pretty important. Like it's pretty important you know you can't subtract in a different order. And it's pretty important we understand we can change the order of multiplication, especially as we work throughout this school year. There's one more property that I think is, is way up there in terms of importance. Anybody have a thought as to what they think the next property is going to be? Do you remember learning these before? Play hang me, I'll start with a D. Distributed? Yep. like pretty darn stinking important property and it is the distributive property what does the word distribute mean right I'd start like if I'm distributing the papers I'm giving them to everyone I'm passing them out to everyone okay so distribute is where we are going to pass out or give it to everyone. The word give is not wrong at all. I tend to stick with passing out because there's some other things we look at much later in the year where I kind of choose to word, use the word give. When I'm trying to explain, I try not to let those sort of cross. But if you think to, to give them to everyone, that's fine too. Technically, we could have an addition sign or a subtraction sign. So some people call this the distributive of addition or the distributive of subtraction. It's the distributive property. That's what we need to know. Okay, the distributive property says if I have something being multiplied to two things that are being added or subtracted, I can take the number sitting in front and I can pass it out to each of them. This one you will use so often in this class I cannot stress its importance. 
If you can't place the appropriate word with it, at least understand how it works. Understand that we can pass this out to each of them, and when we pass it out, we pass it out through the operation of multiplication. Right, parentheses tell us multiplication. So we'll take A times B plus A times C. Yes? Is it possible for you to do B plus C and then multiply A by that like, answer? That more comes down to something when we're talking about order of operations. And yes, that is something we can do to simplify if they're all numbers. We're not going to be looking at things that are all numbers. So that won't be useful to us at that time. So we're actually going to talk about some order of operations tomorrow. Okay, and then we'll sort of look at it there. Questions there? Wait, I'm just now thinking. Is our test Friday or is it Thursday? You said Friday. Thursday. I said Friday earlier, but I think I lied. It's Thursday. It's on campus. It's Thursday. It's fine. Uh, literally, it is a longer version of your quiz and a couple of these problems added onto it. Okay? Like, for real. You'll know. You get a, you'll get a review packet tomorrow that looks just like your test. It's fine. Okay, so are we okay here? These are your three needs to know. Okay, I always try and sort of prioritize to my students, like what's the sort of, you'll hear Dr. McGuire use the word non-negotiable a lot, right? This is what's not, you have to know this. There are some other things that you might not associate terminology with, but we will be using as we go through solving equations. So these I'm gonna go through a little bit quicker because I wanna just make sure you sort of see them and you're familiar with them, but I won't assess you on your test over them. So they'll be in your homework tonight, but they will never show up on a test or your final or anything like that. Okay? So here are the other properties I want us to be familiar with. Like I said, I'm going to go through these a little bit quicker here. An identity property is basically exactly what it sounds like. It says, how can we keep the number looking like what it looks like? And it's sort of this concept that we can have a hidden number, right? And our hidden number in addition is zero, right? So if I have A and I want it to still equal A, what can I add to A so that it still equals A? Four plus blank equals four. Zero. zero. Right, so A plus zero equals zero, or equals A. Right, zero is sort of a hidden number. It keeps the value the same, but it exists. This is an idea that's really helpful when we're trying to manipulate equations and make them look specific ways to fit something we're trying to do. Okay, we have the same thing with multiplication. I can't spell it today. So what do we fill in here? A times blank equals A. One, right? Four times one equals four. So if we're missing a number in addition, it's zero. If we're missing a number in multiplication, it's one. We have an inverse property. This one you've probably used a bajillion times. That's a made up number I like to use. Okay, but you probably have never heard it called that. Okay, and the inverse property is simply how we undo something. Okay, so if I give Chloe $5, what do I have to do to undo that action? Take away, Take away $5, right? So it says, if, you can just write add in your notes if you want, it doesn't really, I don't know why I'm writing all the whole entire word. Right, if we have some amount of money, the, the negative of that negates it, undoes it, 
and takes us back to nothing. So you'll notice this here and this here are the same. Yes? Shouldn't you put parentheses uh, between the plus and the uh, subtraction sign? We can, we do not have to. This one is a bit trickier in terms of actually seeing it. Like if you're solving an equation and you see multiplication, how do you want to do multiplication? Division, we write that division a little bit wonky in this example. Okay, this fraction of one over A is the same thing as dividing. And same thing, right? We have the one here and we have the one here. Okay, and then we have ones that are even easier. I really hope we all know these, but I don't want to assume. We have the, it's either the multiplication of zero property or the zero property of multiplication. What is anything times zero? Zero. And zero, and that's what that says. It says if we multiply by zero, we will always get an answer of zero. Which I just hopefully should qualify as one of those things of like, okay, I'm gonna write it down in my notes, I guess, but I definitely already know that. And hopefully we also already know this one. Our multiplication of negative one property. What happens if we multiply by negative one? Um, I just don't like that word. Yes, that is the potential. I want to pick some different wording. I love that math word, right? It becomes the opposite sign. What's the definition of opposite? What did we say on day two or whatever that opposite meant? What's the opposite of four? Negative four. Negative four. What's the opposite of negative seven? Seven, what does the opposite do? Change the sign, right? So if we're multiplying by negative one, we're changing the sign. We often read this as a negative, but this really tells us it's the opposite. Don't get too hung up on that. We'll talk more about that as we sort of go on and how we read numbers.